how to create a grid in Affinity Photo. This is a grid. Doesn't look like a grid, but it is a grid. It's a very wispy, surreal, unusual, distorted grid. And you can do all kinds of things. But also you can just, of course, use it as a grid. And I'll show you how. So let's just remove that. Just go over here and rectangle tool. Select that. Go with a fill of black. Don't have to, you can go with any color, of course. And just drag down, create a rectangle. Then go to the move tool, hold down the ultra option key and drag. Just duplicate it and then rotate it. And once you've done that, you can just move that around. Now you'll notice it snaps. So you've got this lovely cell. It's the basic part of creating a grid. So what you need, view and make certain that snapping is on. Probably got that by default. So once you've got that, you can then rasterize it. So with those there, just simply, let's just drag it over, right click and go to group and then right click and then go down here to rasterize. So it turns into a pixel layer. There's a pixel layer. You can now go to layer and new pattern layer from selection. And that just creates a very quick grid. And that's it. If you want to just go with the grid, well, you can select the pattern and you can then, you can see here is the actual pattern design and you can resize it. If you want very small, do that. You can also rotate it, do all kinds of different things. So let's just go back to the basic one. I want it fairly small like that. I'm also going to remove the other one. That's the thing. Of course, you can delete it if you want or just hide it. So just delete it. Now, this pattern, you might want to save it. You might think, you know what? I'm going to use this in future projects. So you can go to Window and Assets. So you can just save it quickly that way. But what you can also do with this pattern, once you've got it, once you've set it to the right size, you can always go to layer and you can rasterize it as well, just there. Or again, right click and just down here to rasterize. So it rasterizes that pattern, cuts off now. So it's not infinite. That's the one thing when it's a pattern, it's infinite. Now you've got this pixel layer and you can distort this pixel layer. So filters, go down to distort and deform. You could use some of the others as well perfectly reasonable to use mesh warp, all these sorts of things. But I'm going with deform. And the key thing is just add some pins. And you can see as you do that, you add these pins. The ones that are actually going to be used, you can see slightly bigger. You've got this double ring. And then you can just drag. And you can distort this design in all kinds of ways. Distort it that way. Distort it that way. And you can, of course, add multiple of these pins to create all kinds of unique grids very quickly. Let's pick something. What you can also do, which I quite like to do, filters and repeat deform. Sometimes you find that it actually creates even weirder grid designs. So with this, now I've got this pixel layer, I can duplicate it. Don't have to just have one. So I can right click and duplicate. But with that, I can then go over here, move tool selected so I can reposition it. And you can see then you can create a very extreme, unusual grid. You can also transform it, rotate it, all those kind of things, shear it even. But also again, you can select both, then right click, and again down here, group, and then right click, and again, rasterize. So it's rasterized into a single pixel layer. Now you can apply some effects. Or of course, you can also, as it's a pixel layer, you can always go to layer and you pass and layer from section and create an even more complex design. So let's just go for that layer, new pattern layer. And now you can see you've got this pattern layer. Again, with that selected, you can resize it. So resize that and you can see there's the layer. And you can just resize it like that, move it around. You can also delete the other one. So I don't want that anymore. So again, press the delete key, delete it. But this pattern, you can see there's a problem. Got a seam in it. Go up here with the move tool, you can just set to mirror. And then you've got this lovely design like that. Now, it's not ideal. It's still got a few imperfections in it. Personally, I think that's just slightly odd. But what you can also do is you can always go to effects. So just go down here, click effects, bring this up, and you can go for maybe bevel and boss. You can just add a bevel to it. And radius, just change the settings. I'm just going for pillow 6.3. But also you can go over here, you can just add an outer shadow as well. Radius, offset, intensity, and so on. And close. 
Now, once you're happy with your design, you can always then go to again, right click and rasterize. And it'll come up and ask you. Sometimes it will ask you if it's just a single one and it's got effects, it will ask you that. So just click that off and then rasterize. Well, this now design can be modified again. You can always use filters, repeat deform and so on. But also what you can do is you can cut it. You can remove it. I know that seems slightly odd, but what you can do, you can go to select and down here, selection from layer. So selection from layer, and you've got that selection. Well, at this point, you can simply just go over here and just delete that pixel layer. And you've got this very complex grid, still grid selection that you can then fill with something else. So just go over here, maybe the gradient tool and just apply the gradient. Now, there's no pixel layer, so you need to go to the layer, the new layer, and then you can apply that. And you get this like weird, soft sort of gradient-like effect. Well, what you can then do is you can select and deselect. So you've got this design, you can go to effects. Again, just click out of shadow there. This time maybe go for 3D. And you can then just increase that. And you can see you get this really weird abstract design. Click close. And you can, of course, modify the settings and maybe add bevels and emboss, etc. But also what you can do, just go over here with the move tool, hold down the alter option key and just duplicate that design. So you can see then you create even more complex sort of grid-like designs, which all sort of meld in and blending in in truly weird, spidery, unusual, nightmarish, whatever description I don't, I can't really describe it, but it's certainly an interesting, weird and wonderful. Now I've noticed I've got a bit of an edge there. I made a mistake in the deform. But of course you can always still deform this. So filters, go here to distort and deform. You can then add some pins to this and distort that design. It doesn't have to be and stretch it out like that. In all kinds of unique ways, you can combine it very easily. Again, click apply. Another option is go to layers. You can always just use blend modes between the layers. So layers, you can go maybe for lighten, maybe go there and go to add or difference and so on. I think lighten's often a really good one. Now, another great feature with Affinity Photo 2.5 is you can press return or enter on the keyboard and you get this panel pop up. And then you can go here and you can duplicate a number of copies. You can increase that, you can add rotation and you can see you can create some truly weirdly ghostly sort of effects very quickly using that, obviously depending on the blend mode you've chosen there. And also you can do scale as well to create some very weird abstract designs that way or go the other direction to create a ghostly sort of extending outwards in a sort of disappearing time tunnel like effect. But cancel. That creates obviously multiple layers. Again, select both, then right click and you can go down here and group and right click and go down here and rasterize. So it's all rasterized into one. The exact same as before still can be used with effects. So click there and then just go up here and outline 3D, maybe radius, or maybe go for bevel emboss and try out different things there, as well as outer shadow and so on. And move that there, click close. And you can see you can create some truly unusual abstract background designs, maybe overlays, which of course you can still distort, modify in all kinds of ways, filters, repeat deform, etc., to create even more unique designs. Hope you found this of interest. Any questions, please let me know in the comments below. A like or dislike, always appreciated. Bye.